I love seeing different trends in the RPG industry. We've seen board games turn into RPGs. We've seen RPGs turn into board games. And one other trend that I've been very, very excited to see is something that I think Freely kind of has kind of jump started a few years ago, and that was making art books into RPGs. And I think that's just amazing. I love it so much. Um, Freely has has a great has has incredible access to some amazing artists and one of the minds behind turning those art books into rpgs is nils and he's going to be on this panel along with anna they're two of the best my just awesome folks at, at freely publishing let's just bring them on and uh we'll start this this panel anna nils thank you so much for being a part of this session thank you very much having for having us do you want to uh, introduce yourselves? Uh, let Anna go first. Anna, you want to introduce yourself? Yes, uh, I'm Anna. I work with events for Free League, which usually means you know booking physical physical events. And uh, not now. So now I get to be on YouTube and do interviews. And I'm Swedish as well. If my English is funny, you may comment on that and correct me. <laughs> right. so, it's, so it's not very nice, though. maybe. <laughs> Sorry. My, my Swedish is not good, so we're going to be a great pair on this. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We'll uh, change language a lot between <laughs> Swedish and English. Yeah. Uh, uh, Nils? Yes, uh, my name is Nils, and I'm sitting in a basement in southern Sweden. Uh, I'm a freelance writer, but I write mostly for the Free League. I've done some other stuff as well. Uh, yeah, and I'm a psychologist on my daytime. Yeah. So, very, just a great. Uh, I, I just love ch chatting with you, Nils. It's just a, it's always just a pleasure to have you on, and, and uh, I'm so excited for this this panel. I will tell folks that uh, there's a couple things that I will tell you. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to leave them in the chat. I will try to bring them on. Uh, and uh, also, please hit that subscribe button if you haven't hit that subscribe button, because we really want to grow this uh, YouTube platform and, and uh, connect with uh, the folks that love uh, all the things that, that are free league, uh, and and. We just want to keep connecting with with everyone, even though we can't uh, connect at conventions and, 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 and at events. So thank you so much for uh, for being a part of this. So, all right, I'm going to let Anna take the lead and maybe I'll pop on every once in a while and, and throw a question here or there at you or maybe a comment or two. OK, OK, so let's let's go. Hello. Uh, so, so Nils, psychiatrist from the south of Sweden in a basement, how did you begin to Write and play a role-playing game. How did you end up here? <laughs> well, I, I've played uh, role-playing games almost my entire life. I, I think I told Doug the last time we, we spoke that uh, my mother was my first game master. So I played a lot with my family, my two brothers, and, and we had a lot of common friends in, in different ages, and everyone played role-playing games in those days. Um, and I always wanted to write, but I, I, I never... I never, never thought of uh, that I could actually write role-playing games. I tried to write, you know, novels, and for a while I wrote some plays for for different uh, theater groups and so on. Then I, I wrote for a role-playing game called Oktoberlandet uh, in maybe two thousand and six, um, and the author uh, Christian Merstam was uh, he's kind of my mentor i would say <laughs> he was very nice to me back then and he it took what i wrote and he gave me a lot of input and and uh, uh, made the text much better and and from that point he has kind of helped me a lot during my my process of, of becoming better as a writer so i wrote three scenarios for him back in 2006 and yeah and i i guess it's been like that because when now we're going to come to the first art games, Tales from the Loop, the great game with illustration from Simon Stolenhag. How did you end up in that pro project? Well, actually, that's also connected to Oktoberland, <laughs> the same game. That Everything I goes back to Oktoberland. Because yeah. yeah. <laughs> he did the second version of the game that was uh, published by the Free League. Uh, and I wrote some stuff for that. I wrote scenarios and so on, and I was really hooked. And I was like, "Could I do? Could could I get a chance to do this more?" So I wrote to Thomas uh, and asked him, "Do you have any projects? <laughs> could I write something?" <laughs> and we had some conversation, and um, yeah, and he was like, "I think I think uh, I think this tales from the loop would suit you well." 
uh, and then I, I was like, I, I don't know what what to do with this. Uh, he told me they wanted they wanted a game with kids solving mysteries. So I sat down with a friend who I play a lot with, and he actually he had a lot of good ideas that that ended up in the game. Um, so I wrote kind of a, a summary of my thoughts to Thomas. I I think we could do it like this and like this and like this. Uh, and I got a mail back that this sounds great. And there was, I, I had a different rule system in mind. I, 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 at that point, they didn't use year zero for everything. They, they did use different rule system. Uh, so he changed uh, in some of those ideas. And then I just started writing like a maniac. <laughs> I had that idea that if I write uh, really fast, I will get to write a lot of the game. <laughs> So I just started writing and writing all that summer, and um, I kind of wrote the, the 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 core of the game during like three months or something. Then there were, of course, a lot of changes. But yeah. And when are we now in time? This was the summer. This is or... hard. I, 2014, 15, yeah. some yeah, somewhere there. there. Yeah. So this was before Simon was like super famous and everything. So yeah. Yeah. Like very much. It, yeah, and Stranger Things had, I, I think they had started to show it, but I, I, I didn't see it until afterwards. Mm. Sounds uh, implausible, but actually I, I didn't see it. But I, I, of course Thomas did, and, and he had a lot of great ideas to, to, mm. to use, like E.T. and Stranger Things and mm. so, so on, I think. Yeah. So when people say, because when I stand at fairs, people are like, oh, so this is like Stranger Things. Is this in your world? It's like, yeah. You, you think, or are you like... No, it's. Uh... <laughs> I, I love Stranger Things, so so I think that is a compliment to the game. Uh, so that's great. But but um, in retrospect, I can see that uh, there there are a lot of things in this game I didn't anticipate. Uh, I've also told Doug that uh, in a other interview that I didn't get the whole. Um, uh, what do you call it in English when you when you look back in time and you're literally oh the eighties oh uh, <laughs> that nostalgia nostalgic. Yeah, thanks I, I didn't get the nostalgia thing because I'm not nostalgic over the eighties yeah. at all <laughs> so I, I to me that was a surprise that people would react in that way but uh, in hindsight it's of course they would of course that's yeah. part of the idea so when are you 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 when are you born. How old were you in like uh, 79. Okay, so you kind of, yeah. Some... Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm just not nostalgic of the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> so, but when you did this, when you sat down with your friend, did you take like Simon's great images and looked at them and like from that went inspiration? So you, did you put them all over your working space? <laughs> you be like... no, no, I didn't. I, but mm -hmm. I, I, of course, looked at the pictures all through the, the yeah. process. Um, I, I think I think Simon. I, th I think he's one of the greatest artists I know. But I think people sometimes forget that he's an excellent writer as well. I think his texts are uh, really inspiring in in all of his works, uh, especially actually in in the things from from the flood, but also in in tales. Um, and I'm more a text person than a, than a image person. Kind of, <laughs> I, I have a hard time creating images in my head. So so I used a lot of his text and of course his images as well but i didn't no. didn't put a bit all over my room no. <laughs> but, but could you like because did you look at images or take pieces from the text and be like yes i'm making a scene exactly from this point this to the scenario like he draws a lot of bus stops are you like yes let's put something on a bus stop or uh... <laughs> yes and no okay. <laughs> you'll get a long answer um the first part of the process for all of these three books is just going through it and just underlining everything and trying to both get kind of a feel for it. You got to get like into the theme, the mood, yeah. the, the, the red line that is maybe not that uh, spoken. It's just like a feeling of, 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 yeah. of the art. Uh, then it could be a bus stop. And, and then I use a bus stop in, a, in an example for, for a skill or something, but, but not into a scene. Mm. But uh, with Simon's work, um, there, were, there are no uh, new pictures in the role-playing game. It, it, it's the same as in the, in the, um, as in the book. Yeah. Uh, so I had to go through this book and, and find possible pictures for scenarios. Uh, and uh, 
and and for the first book, I, I would say this is the hardest to to mm. do a role playing game of mm -hmm. because in in things from the flood you have you have like a story, a very apparent story from from start to end. It starts with the flooding and it stops when they like fill all of the the loop with with concrete, and the, and they become teenagers and move on in their life so on uh, but tales from the loop i think is more of a of a of art that is full of um, mood and, and and kind of solemn pictures with sad silent kids standing in the rain not that much uh, laser ninjas with orcs and <laughs> stuff to, to traditional scenarios from so i had a hard time uh, trying to figure out where can I find scenarios that match these images? Yeah. So I started to catalog them and, and trying to mix them together. And I had like instruction: you have you got to have three images to each scenario. Uh, so I was trying to mix, mix and match, yeah. and, and that was hard, but also very funny. Uh, and you have to like look at the yeah. images to see. Uh, I, I mean, there's there's an image in in uh, things from the flood for, uh, of a police officer researching something with his flashlight and that became like uh, an alien uh, or archive x story in that role playing game because i was like what could he be looking for mm -hmm. and you got to create kind of a story in your head that he's there's some kind of evidence and strange mm -hmm. things going on and so forth uh, so cool. that was yeah. so you didn't get the privilege of being like simon i want an image of this you were like you were more oh. like people who write like movie scripts. Here is the book, create yeah. a movie. And in your yeah. case, like here's the book, create a role playing game. Yeah. Yeah. I actually, I, 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 I've spoken to Simon, but mm -hmm. not uh, not when I wrote it. Uh, the communi communication was uh, through the Free League, and I've, I've met him afterwards. And, and I, I think he's really great, great artist and great guy, mm -hmm. great person. But during the process, we didn't. Uh, yeah sit down and speak how how yeah. should we make this into a role playing game no so you had really had his book and like yeah yeah like underlining and trying to yeah, figure yeah. out so was it inspiring was it fun like to because usually when role playing games are made it's from like we are set in this world or from some kind of lore here you had like here's the book and as you say things it was very much it had a story so you could like was it fun to work like that would you recommend it yeah i love it uh I think that there's a cliche that that uh, it's easier to have boundaries when you're trying to create something, and and I think that is really true. And and mm. in this project, it was really really true. That I, I had to use exactly these these things, and 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 um, and also I couldn't I couldn't um, I couldn't decide what things are. I mean, I don't know what the gravitron is. Mm. I don't really know what the loop is, and Simon. Of course, doesn't tell me. I, I don't know if he knows. Probably, possibly. Well, I think <laughs> and I could, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> he probably knows. And and like the the machine cancer in in uh, things from the flood, I couldn't define it. Uh, I couldn't say this is this is what it is because mm -hmm. in 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 the in the tale in in the story, there are lots of different ideas about the machine cancer, or does it even exist? Is, an, is it imagination? You could very well interpret yeah. it as, as that. Uh, and and uh, I think if you if you write a traditional role play, that is one thing you do very quickly. These are the facts about the world. Yeah. These are the different players. These are the hidden truths. Mm. Uh, and I really loved writing like that, not knowing, mm. not defining. Uh, <laughs> so how would you say like tales and things separate them from other? What's their like uniqueness from other role playing games? Is it this kind of mystical that you don't know everything? It's a super hard question. So you can't say, say, pass I, I, I can try that. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, just the role playing games, not the art books. Yeah, know. I mean, the role playing games. I'm yeah, thinking people who may have not played them, who may be oh, listening, oh. are like, okay, what's I the. I can like say very, very quickly that, that um, Tales from the Loop is a, is a game about kids trying to solve mysteries it's et style uh, but it's also a game about 
the life of these kids, uh, how mom and dad are arguing and maybe separating, how everyone is kind of not nice in school and how you try to like find your your base your your camp with the other kids and and uh, yeah conflicts between mm. the kids and stuff um i think people play it differently and that was actually my intention i wanted this to be become a game where some people can look at some things of the game and say oh this is a game about this and some people could say this is a game about this uh I, th I think that's a, that's a good thing in a game. Uh, when I play Taste from the Loop and Things from the Flood, it is mostly about the everyday scenes. My groups love drama and dark <laughs> darkness and anxiety. <laughs> so we dig down in that and there is some kind of mystery. They don't really care, but yeah. somehow they solve it. Uh, but it, it, the mystery is there to enhance uh, the tension in the other scenes. We use the mystery to to, to make, uh, yeah, everyday life interesting. But I think many people play it the other way around. They're like, "Do we have to have everyday scenes?" And I'm like, "No, you don't. Play it as you want." I mean, I, I think it works. Oh, I think it works good as a as a mystery game, yeah. and you can have some scenes from everyday life to spice up your characters. Mm. Uh, I would, I, I would think that most people play it like that. And, sorry, <laughs> I'm talking no, like... No, uh, no it's your thing. You know, speed. Uh, the, ta the things from the flood is uh, perhaps kind of the same, but you're actually teenagers. And it's about the 90s. And it's a much darker game. Uh, this is the game where you can use like the clown from E.T., the movie. And you can... Uh, I, I watched a lot of Archive X when I wrote this. Mm. Uh, just... <laughs> writing stuff down for for ideas so if, if you if you're into the like more darker things and more horrible things i think this is the one you should go for uh, <laughs> yeah. more more uh, more sex and uh, other teenage questions as well <laughs> you can have all of that not suitable for a, not suitable for a game about kids but in uh, yeah sorry yeah. no and if you love the rpg books and have played rpgs you should See if you can get the art books because then you will get the like broad and yeah. yeah, yeah. Cool. Now I think, yeah, I'm looking at the cup. We're going to move on because then after you have done these two games, you probably did a few other things. And then it came to another book called Versen that isn't, it, it's another type of book. It's instead, it's, um, yeah, it's actually like more of a dictionary of Nordic kind of creatures. Yeah. So that's another kind of. In input in, in you and I'm guessing Thomas was like here make a role game <laughs> you know in a very uh, nice kind of way so he's how, looking how at me stern yeah. now you go down into your basement <laughs> don't so come up how, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so how, how did that happen how did you kind of um came to uh, pass I, I, I actually didn't know that it was you on air accounts images that mm. I was writing for uh, at the very start. I, I love his books. I have all of his books. Yeah. And, and we actually have double copies because my wife also loves them. Uh, <laughs> but when I was uh, asked to come to, to discuss uh, a new project, I, I took the train to Stockholm, of course. Uh, and they presented this, this project that they had quite a lot of uh, thoughts about. They had made a, a, like a much more of a coherent plan and uh, thoughts about what it should be and chapters and so forth um, and it was said to be like like a, a game about vasen and mysteries and and i was supposed to to write a campaign for it nothing else mm. then somehow i i i don't really remember somehow i wrote one chapter and then another and then another and then somehow i had written the entire book um which which i'm very glad for but somehow that just happened uh and i wrote the campaign as well uh and and of course after a very short time i understood that it was yuan's images we were writing for so <laughs> of course i knew that while i was writing yeah but it, it was very different um i think yuan had a lot of uh, input in the process as well uh he had a lot of ideas and 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 uh, things he added that that spiced up and, and made a book better 
So, so how, how was the process? If with Simon's book, I'm seeing you sitting with highlight there. Like, so how, how was it here? Because I did the same thing. But I float, sorry. Yeah. So, but instead of having all these like this short stories, you had all these creatures that you were going to make into adventures. How, like, did you have brainstorming sessions with uh, Johan Egikans, who is the artist, and uh, with uh, Thomas and Nils from Free League, or how how kind of how did a book of monsters turn into an art? Yeah. <laughs> I had I had a. Uh one or two really good long sittings with the Free League uh, at the beginning before I started to write. But then it was mostly I wrote it and then we changed it and then I rewrote it and we changed it and so on. So I, I wrote like a, I wrote a thing from beginning to end. Uh, then we started to, to change it and Johan looked at it and so forth. Uh, but it was another process because uh, Johan, he is, uh, I don't know the, the English word, but he's very good at looking up facts. He has, like, in the end of this book, there are a lot of uh, literature that he has uh, read. He's got a whole list of books. Yeah. Uh, so with this, I, I could start reading all of these books, and, and maybe not all of them, but, but I read a lot of other books about Vaisen. So I wasn't that, it wasn't uh, a feeling of, um, I can't say that, I can't define this. I can't. I had a lot of information that was not in his book, but was in line with what he has written. Um, and I was also inspired a lot by other things, like like uh, I tried to get a feeling of Sandman, you know, Neil Gaiman, the, the comic yeah. books. I think uh, that is one of the greatest things that have, has ever been written. So I, I stole some things from, from his yeah. little stories and, and put into the game. So, are there any artists that you would wish that you could write a, like that you could write an RPG for? Like, uh, are there any? Is, is there any art that's out there that you're like, you know, I wish I could write an RPG about this? You, you just, you know, you kind of, you know, gave an example of something that you drew inspiration from. I'm just wondering if there's maybe something else that you've seen. They're like, wow, this is really cool. I, I would love to write this. Yeah. I, there is a there is an artist uh, called Shantan Shantan I don't know his real name. Uh, he, his, uh, sorry, his pronunciation of his name. I know his real name is. Um, he's written a book called The Arrival, which is a book about immigrants coming to a new country, and it's a really um, absurd, weird, strange uh, book with really strange <laughs> images, trying to explain not how it is to come to a new country, but the feeling of it, using something to get food that sticks out from the roof and you turn it and something comes out and you don't understand it. So I, I love his pictures. Nice. Uh, we also have a, another question, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll address it while. Yes, sir. Um, Sinjuro asks, uh, what is the most you've ever written from a single image? And what was that image? <laughs> that is a hard question. Uh, basically, for, for one thing, I, I don't really remember, but I could say I wrote uh, the recycled boy for uh, the starter set mm -hmm. from this image, mostly. Mm -hmm. um, and that was Thomas who asked me, could you make something where we can use this image? <laughs> and so I wrote the recycled boy. I think that's uh, that's him. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Cool. So, but, uh, and for Vesa now, we also wrote... Um, uh, an adventure in a wicked, a wicked secret that's just out, and you had the book there, so you could show it. Yep, yep. And, I'm gonna find it. In... Yeah, <laughs> I'm feeling like I have my books in my other room, so I need to. I do not want to bring my computer to my messy home. But yeah, that's the wicked secret. Yes. Uh, that's just out, uh, and so and there you go to like and both this both tales and Vesen is set in like the Nordic countries. So do you draw inspiration from like? I know Simon does it. He goes out and looks, and I think you one goes to libraries and look for like inspiration for his image. What what do you do? You do you go to your basement <laughs> <laughs> and just do everything here. <laughs> no, for, I can say a little about Vesa because because um, one of the things I found much, most uh, giving. Could you say that most? No. I, I like the rewarding. Most. I think it's rewarding. Is yeah mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, what's that? 
some somewhere through the process, I, I, I kind of realized that all of us are kind of uh, attached to, to the people living there. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think one of the most important things to do when you when you write one of these RPGs is, is to figure out who are the people living in, in these worlds, who are the people living in Tales from the Loop, who are the people living in, in amongst Vasen. Mm -hmm. um, and then you can start to think about who are the characters and, and who will they encounter and stuff. Um, and since Vasen exists, I mean, Vasen exists all over the world uh, in every little town. If you go there and you just go back in time, like 200 years, there will be myths about Vasen. So, so I kind of realized that there is there is stories to be told uh, wherever I have lived my entire life. Uh, in, in the village where I came from, Bjuv, there is a coal mine. Um, I could easily do a, a Vasen uh, in scenario about that coal mine and the conflicts going on and in this in in the in this book there's a vassan called the night soul uh, that takes place in mulle in skåne uh, which is a it's kind of a big cliff coming up from the ocean uh, very dramatic with trees and a lot of cliffs and and, and uh, caves with strange names so i i basically took things I knew, know about Mölle and, and this place and, and turned it into a scenario. And how do you like it translate, like, because I'm thinking Free League from, from the beginning, like this is a Swedish company, it began with a Swedish audience, but now we have like a worldwide audience. How do you make sure, because it's also Nordic creature, Nordic Vasen, Vasen means creature. Uh, how, how do you translate it to make sure people from like the US or all, cultures understand all these weird kind of Nordic names <laughs> or like that is, that is a difficult question actually uh, mm. and something we, we talked a lot about how to I mean you can go two ways you could either add a lot of information in the book you could have like 500 pages from Wikipedia about Sweden in the 19th century and just add a lot of details and think that maybe this could help people play in that part of the world during these times mm. Uh, but in the end, I, we we, sh we chose uh, another way, uh, and that was to make it a mythical, a mythical north. Uh, you you can have certain ideas and pictures, and 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 just go with it, and just decide that it can be whatever you want. And I think that was a wise choice. Uh, you 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 can that there are no rights and wrongs. You can just do whatever you want with it. Mm. And I think you could you could just as well play Vassen in, in America or wherever, uh, mm. use local Vassen. Oh, yeah. Because I, would, I would do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Vassen is, a, compared to Tales, Vassen is more a horror game. So how was it to write like horror so people will be scared? How do you like plan things dramaturgic so you can, it can get this kind of gloomy horror feel? How are you yeah. working with that? That is difficult. Uh, I think I, I, I try to never write scenes when I write uh, RPGs, uh, scenarios. I, I think that is one way to do it, to, to write scenes when, when you write a scenario. And when you do that, it's easier to kind of plan. Uh, the, the thing will come out from the cupboard at this time. And when, but, but if you don't do that, if you instead write like locations and events and background, it's harder actually to plan uh, horror. <laughs> so you have to you have to make it a part of the of the structure of of the setting of the background. There have to be like um, horrifying things, but you can't really plan when the the player characters will get scared. Mm. Uh, so so I I just try to fill it with mood, <laughs> and hopefully it's scary. I don't know. <laughs> and then it's very much up to the game master to create that kind of because it seems you give the game master a lot of tools to like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you, uh, we, we've got a couple. Sorry, I just pop in every once in a while. We've got a couple of really good questions. If if, if uh, and I know we're kind of you know we're we're trying to keep these around 40, 45 minutes. Uh, let's uh, there's there's one question from Tobias. Let me let me just th throw that in here real quick. How does communication with co-author co-authors work? Do you all work by yourselves, or is it a, or is it a collaborative thing? Uh, I, I think this will be very different for different projects. Sure. For the for these projects, um, I have written. A manuscript 
and uh, for this and things things that I didn't write what was added af after the Kickstarter after I had done my thing kind of uh, there were some things added from the Kickstarter and and uh, uh, something was rewritten uh, I think the resource system and the, it was the same with with uh, Tales from the Loop and things from the flood I wrote kind of all my chapters and and then the other people wrote uh, their parts in in Tales from the Loop they wrote uh, uh, the texts about uh, about the world uh, in things from the flood I've written almost everything uh, there are some some parts written by other people so uh, let's see here the other question that was asked was Vason's uh, uh, workshop documents are released and I'm looking forward to writing scenarios for it what would you suggest people for inspiration to get a real feel for Vason any books movies images etc uh, which is good because that ties into our previous uh, session, which we talked about the Free League Workshop uh, earlier. So if you haven't checked that out, go go check that yeah, out. But uh, you know, I'm I'm curious uh, as well. I'm a I'm a father of two small children, so I don't get to to watch that many movies and and, and TV series for the moment. So it was a long time I was updated in that area. But what I would do is what I talked about previously. I would go to my own ancestors. I would look where where my grandparents lived and, and try to find stories there and connect them to 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 this and um, that 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 was that, that would be what i would do yeah but i mean there's like the grim grim is a series on netflix it's kind of okay as an inspiration for this and <laughs> watch some episodes and if it's we talked before about that um it's up to the game master to like create a lot like you give them a lot of tools so because you're game mastering too and you're when you play yeah so what's your then best tips to game master the game master when you take material is it to bring out the highlighter and be like yes <laughs> this is to, what to, i want to scare people yeah no yes <laughs> yeah, or, or like just as game master yeah to get an right atmosphere like a scary atmosphere like because I don't think this is the like boo scenario. No, it's more no. like the. I, I like I like lack of information in in uh, scary scenarios. I like I like when things are ambiguous and no that vase didn't stand there a moment before and mm -hmm. and uh, and I like to to when 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 you can mess with the players or the player characters' heads, they see things and imagine things and such stuff. That that's what I like the most. When a GM's horror, I, I kind of like older horror movies in that aspect, where th where they were not super gory, where they just kind of pan away to like, and you see the the silhouette or the shadow, and you let your mind kind of fill in the blanks. And I think that's you know that that's you know what what you kind of strive for with Vason as well, yeah. a little bit. Yeah, I'm guessing the monsters are always most scary when you don't see them. When you see them, you're like, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. sure. And I think Vesson is it's it's not. It could be played like a really bad horror game, but it's not really no. uh, intended for that. It's like like a light, soft horror touch, maybe. Yeah. P partly hor horrifying. Mm. Yeah. But you're besides writing for Freddy. You also are like a pen for hire here. You write, you're going to work with another horror game soon, and then maybe you had some super secret project with Free League. So we're not going to, you know, say what that is. But so how how is that? How do you organize like your life? You work daytime, and then you have like, yeah, I'm a pen for hire for a certain amount of time. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a that's a difficult question. Uh, I could say that the project uh, for another. Uh, companies is a uh, campaign for for Helmgast for for uh, cult uh, written a campaign that is basically finished uh, but it, of course there is a lot of editing and stuff to do um, but just the, the time factory I don't really know when I write kind of I I, I uh, I write all the time. Uh, I was like home with one of my kids uh, all through the spring, and then I, whenever he slept, I write from minute one to to when he wakes up. Mm -hmm. I just use all the time, and I often go up early in the morning and write uh, until the kids 
wake or, or if they're awake, I try to write some stuff and I could write in the nights and stuff. So I, I've, I don't have the privilege to, to write when I feel good or when I, when I uh, yeah, I, I just got to use all time there is because I have such little time and I'm, I've become quite good at that, just using whatever there is. I have some kind of weird stress that uh, <laughs> I won't get anything done if I don't write it now and everything will be bad. And so I have to write all the time. So <laughs> it's kind of sometimes kind of both stressful and kind of good because it makes me work a lot <laughs> with it. Yeah. Yeah. So do you sit with your computer then or do you have like a notebook you're walking around with and being like, oh, yeah, now, you know, I walked through the bus and I saw this interesting person. Do, do, do. Like, right. I mostly write at the computer, and and I like just. I, I think I want to start writing as soon as possible because I, I think mo many I, many ideas come when you just start writing. But you gotta have a, you gotta have some ideas before you start. Otherwise, you you can't do it. So there is this boring process of of just checking facts and looking up stuff before you can just go sit at the computer. So the nice stuff is when you get flow, when you have done all the highlighting yeah. and fact and post-its and all of that and then like, so yeah. when you design a scenario, like how is the, do you like, yeah, as for example with the picture with the policeman, like mm -hmm. they begin there and, or like how, how do you begin and how do you structure it? Yeah. I often, I often have things that I, I um, get enthusiastic about. <laughs> I got some, some ideas or some images. Oh, I got to do this. And they're like just randomly arranged in some kind of messy order. And then I just uh, try to arrange it somehow. And th that is also always a process of like, ah, okay, I'll do it like this. Oh, oh. It, 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 it's got to be in some kind of order. So <laughs> I have to like, change the ideas to fit together and then it, then it just becomes some kind of structure uh, so, that makes so sense I don't, know. I don't know if it makes but it sense but but if you were like um, if there's people out there who want to write their own scenarios for things uh, for tales or vessel or what, whatever actually uh, for free league workshop or whatever what would your best kind of advice would be if you would be like your mentor christian to 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 the internet now what <laughs> Sorry, small, small, small. No, but what would you advise people, people who want to write role-playing games? Uh, I would, I would say two, two things. Uh, the first, if you haven't written much, uh, I think it's a very good thing to 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 use a model. Either use another scenario and just use the structure. I think uh, RPG writers are very reluctant or bad at talking about scenario structure and how you actually do it. Uh, and that's why I have written very clearly how I think the structure of the scenarios should be in, in VAS and, and, and things. So use it. Don't change it the first time. Use the structure. Then you can change it. So use something as a model and just follow the, the steps. And you will notice if it doesn't fit in with your idea or somehow. Uh, the other thing is, is to uh, use your inspiration. I think there are... It, it is easy to just see it as a... Okay, I, I'll, I'll say it like this. There, there are enough uh, orcs on wolves trying to grab gold. That is not an interesting idea. There are a lot of, uh, there are enough villages with a wizard who wants to give you uh, some something to do. You, you have to. Every instant instance of the scenario needs to have something that is kind of new or inspiring or interesting. You shouldn't write. Uh, NPCs that are boring to write, then you shouldn't be writing them. <laughs> they don't have to be like a phantasmagoria, but you have to find them interesting. And that is true for every little part of the scenario. And, and then you, I think you will do good things. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so so find is And then I, it doesn't sound like you work in like mood boards, but, but work in mood boards or like work in how, how do you collect your inspiration? Like if you go around and get this, like, okay, this is... Yeah, I, I have a lot of notebooks I just write in and write in my phone and stuff. But mostly I just have a document on, on, on my computer and I quite early I get the structure done for, for uh, how the scenario would will be. And then I just start filling up and, and mostly I just start writing from the first word and I write to the last word of the scenario. 
and, and of course, I, during the process, I rewrite stuff. But I, I just, I, I think that is a good thing to, to just write it from top to bottom. <laughs> so, but in, is that because now you're like you're getting like write about this from Simon the Tales or Vesen or Cult or like if you would get to be like we want you to write whatever you want, would that be total anxiety or would it be like yeah, I have this? Like, what would you want to do if you could do whatever? Do you yeah. know that? <laughs> <laughs> I would I would like to try to write uh, some kind of fiction that that would be fun to do uh, beside the, the RPG uh, writings yeah. but I think I, I actually have my I've I have done and I am doing my dream projects in 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 RPG so I I don't have <laughs> anything to complain about <laughs> in that matter um, yeah it would be hard to, to to imagine things to do that I haven't done already and it sounds also like you really enjoy the writing process because sometimes it's like I, funnier to think about things than actually like sit down. Maybe this yeah. is why I work with PR and not writing. But but like um, so so that's the real like you need to enjoy that or I don't need I don't know if you need to enjoy it. I know that I need to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. uh, if 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 it, if I don't enjoy it, it's often because because it's really bad uh, what i'm writing it's just a sign that this is shit because I, I i don't like writing it then i have to go back and just okay this is a mess uh, i gotta change it so that's like a sign that uh oh yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah or or if i just can't continue further it's it's there there's something wrong yeah. in the in the structure or something Wow, this is very cool. I think I'm getting to the end here. I'm I'm looking at Doug. If yeah, we've know, got we've got. got uh, yeah. This has been really interesting. Yeah, I, yeah, I I loved it. I, I, again, I love having you on, Nils. It's just uh, just a pleasure having having uh, having you talk about uh, uh, all the design and, and writing that you do for for these games. Because man, I I'll tell you what, you know, to be able to take a uh, a picture and create any kind of like story or anything behind it, and then to actually make make it a, an RPG as well. Just uh, it's more than my my mind could probably count the air you know, handle. So it's it's really uh, uh, really a, a treat to have you on and, and listen to your process and and figure and see how 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 you how it works. Um, let's see here. We got some. Let's let's actually. Yeah, I want to do some like challenges where you you know take a random art picture like here, write a short scenario for yeah, this. Exactly. You know, <laughs> just, like this. Just, yeah. just to test them. We should. You know, you know what? That's what we'll do next time. Is we'll just yeah. bring in. We'll have we'll have Nils come on and we'll just throw <laughs> different pieces of art at him and and have him yes. come up with yeah, something right on I the would spot. Love that. <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have a question here. We should well, be. no, is the awesome advice. Thank you for sharing, Mentor Nils. <laughs> planning to pick up the pen myself. Isn't, isn't that what I mean, Nils? Isn't that really what you want as like an as a writer and author? Like you want to inspire other people to to do that. Like I, I mean, yeah. that's that's how I am at least. I, I think that yeah. that's. I, I think I, I have been so happy to see that for Tales from the Loop, there has. There are so many written scenarios that people have have written and published on their own and given to each other and played. And I, I really, really enjoy that. And I think that is, I mean, I think RPG should be your own. You shouldn't be, you shouldn't only play like what other people tell you. These are the scenarios you can play to this game. You should create your own stuff. Uh, and I hope. Uh, that it will be the same for Vass and that people really start creating stuff and they already have started to, to create stuff so so that makes me happy did also we've got shout out to, shout out to Anna Anna did a great job and did great with this interview <laughs> yeah. of course we did we, we knew I mean that's why we said let's get Anna on Anna you'll have to come on tomorrow how about that would you like yeah. to come on tomorrow yes yes right. I would we're gonna talk yes. post apocalypse I have uh, less structure notes about that, but yes, <laughs> I have an idea. I, I've learned this into that structure is very important, like, and you should like find your model and put stuff in so you know what to do. Great. <laughs> See, these yeah. sessions are educational as well as uh, everything else. So, all right. Uh, thank you, everyone, for giving your time to uh, tune in and watch this. If you're watching this after the fact, thank you so much. Uh, feel free to leave any comments down below. We'll be glad to uh, address them as as we can. Um, 
Nils and Anna, thank you so much for for also for coming back on and and uh, being a part of this. Uh, if you enjoyed this session, please hit the like button down below and uh, share it with somebody that you know that loves uh, all these uh, RPGs that that Nils writes for and 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 creates. And and I just think uh, I think a lot of uh, people in this industry that, that write these games don't get the recognition that they do. So I, I really, I'm really glad that we can we can feature uh, all these folks that work for, very very hard making these these amazing games. So also, I'm gonna tell you again, hit that subscribe button. We're almost at three thousand subscribers. That would be awesome if we could get that before uh, Spiel Digital is all said and done. All right, that's gonna do it for this session. Thank you so much.